rainy day in the woods of Bo, these hikers are hunting for something many of us overlook. I think it's just a rustle up. They're looking for forest dwellers that come in alien shapes. So these guys are amazing. They have a slime sheath on them. With alien names. Rhodocolibia, maybe? Ro yeah, Rhodocolibia. Oh no, this is a It is? And sometimes covered in slime. Here, you should hold that and be careful because they're slippery. <laughs> now, what is that called again? That's a Hygrophorus phylogenius. We are talking about wild mushrooms that often grow in our own backyards and nearby woods. I like to just plop myself in a spot and look around and see how many tiny things that I can find because they're everywhere. Melinda Keck fell in love with these short-lived fruiting bodies when she was a kid. I think part of it is them just being so ephemeral. They're not there for a long time, and so it's almost like a treasure hunt when you go to find them because you don't know what you're going to see. It's not like a tree that you can come visit every, you know, every week if you wanted to. When not working her full-time job, she's searching the woods of New Hampshire with other fungi fans like Christine Gagne. My husband knows that when I say let's go for a hike, it really means let's go look for mushrooms. Um, it doesn't mean that we're hiking any distance. <laughs> Seeking out wild mushrooms in the woods and taking pictures is nothing new, but the number of people doing this as a hobby is. It has boomed in the last couple of years. Um, I feel like 2017 and 2018 were really the beginning of it. Which meant more people in the woods looking like they lost their keys. I get... Are you looking for something? <laughs> Kim Lampro started mushroom hunting during the pandemic as an excuse to get outside. Nature, it's everything to me. It's my, my therapy, it's my sanctuary. And New Hampshire is a great place to learn. When it comes to diversity, I think we're one of the best places in the United States. And I think that it's really an untapped area for research when it comes to fungal biodiversity. Both Melinda and Michelle do guided hikes as mushroom educators, which means getting hands-on with the bouncy to the oozy. And then it just does the slimy thing. Now, do you ever run across a mushroom out here that you're like, I've never seen that before? Yes. Oh, yeah. Just on this trail on Sunday when we came out, there were quite a few that I had to look up. I mean, there's tens of thousands of mushrooms. For newbies, that can be overwhelming. So they agreed to show me some basics. For starters, a common mushroom is just the tip of an underground fungus iceberg. It starts with a web of something called mycelium, which can span acres underground. When conditions are right, the mycelium produces a fruit we know as the mushroom. It takes years to learn how to identify wild mushrooms, mainly because different species can look similar. So besides appearance, experts look at location and yes, smell. And they also have scales on the top. They almost look like an onion bagel and they sometimes can smell like them too, which is really neat. It's one of the identifying features for them. And this one smells a bit cucumbery. Once you do learn these species, we found it's hard to pass by one. In fact, while shooting this story, at one point, the lady suddenly pulled off the road like it was an emergency. They spotted a mushroom. We've got some grafola on this tree. I'm very excited. Actually, the nicest one's in the back. But we saw them as we were driving this way, and I love that all three of us have perfected the mushroom slam on the brakes. Which brings us to an important part of mushroom hunting, eating them. Many wild mushrooms are edible. Right here, we have Pleurotus ostriatus. These are Craterellus tubiformis. And these are all edible. In fact, for experts like Melinda, they hunt a lot of edible wild mushrooms each year. Anywhere between probably one and 300 pounds, depending on the year. <laughs> 
We need to be very clear here. Some mushrooms can be edible, while others can be poisonous. People are encouraged to check and double check with an expert before consuming. To know what is good and what is not, first learn what can hurt you. Um, I would encourage people to learn what an Amanita looks like. That's one of the bigger, deadly ones that are up here. Once you do safely identify an edible wild mushroom, the possibilities are endless. You can candy your mushrooms, you can make jerky, you can make pickles with mushrooms, you can pickle your mushrooms. The ladies showed us some of the things wild mushrooms found in New Hampshire can be used for. These are um, breaded and fried city wax caps. And miso soup with matsutake mushroom. Mmm, it's fresh. That's just so wild that you're picking it from the backyard practically. Yeah. And there it is in bowl soup. Even cutting into that graffola they found by the road, it made a perfect topper for homemade pizza. That is delicious. If you want your bites or hikes to be spruced up by mushrooms, read up, take a guided tour, and most importantly, watch where you step. <laughs>